Hello, it's Mark Melnichuk here again with The Leader Post uh, for another one of our kind of audio podcast uh, pieces of content that we've been putting out uh, from our respective homes in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, so the Saskatchewan Health Authority has re released its, I guess, projections or model for the potential effects of the pandemic in Saskatchewan uh, with deaths anywhere from I think it says 3,075 to 800 and 370 in the province. Uh, and today I am joined by our political correspondent, Arthur White Crummy, to talk about these uh, projections. Arthur, can you hear me? I can. And I don't think that I've ever been referred to as a correspondent before. So thank you for that. It makes me feel important. Oh, okay. I'll be sure to, I'll be sure to, to do it again. Uh, Arthur, at face value, I think some people might be kind of freaked out by these numbers. So I'm just wondering, maybe just to give people an idea of, you know, what these things are for. Can you just explain like what this modeling is is meant to do and, and what are people supposed to take away from it? Yeah. So when we talk to health officials about this document on Wednesday, they were very clear that these are not predictions. This is not what will happen. Uh, it is a model based on data from other countries and some early, Can uh, some early Canadian data that basically takes assumptions about how the virus could spread in Saskatchewan and just basically plays out scenarios. The point of it is to help the, the health system prepare for Again, what, what could happen in Saskatchewan if the course of the pandemic looks like it did in countries like China, Southern Italy, and again, in the early stages of the infections in Canada. Okay. What's the idea behind releasing this to the public? Some people I've seen online have said, well, they shouldn't be doing this because it's just going to make people panic. Uh what do you think about that? Well, um, I might have a bias on this, but I always think that transparency is the best policy. And I actually commend the SHA for being upfront about the basis on which they are making decisions about how to allocate their resources in the midst of this pandemic. So they're trying to be prepared uh, and they're telling us the modeling information on which they are making those decisions about our health resources and our tax dollars. So we as the media have been asking for this information for weeks and uh, thankfully they gave it to us and we were able to share it with the public. Again, we need to be very careful though to convey to our readers and our listeners that this is what could happen, not what will happen. So going into that, I, I guess my next question, I'll, I'll couch it by saying that, you know, we're not saying that this is a prediction of what will happen, but what's kind of the, maybe can you take me through what kind of the best case and then worst case scenarios are that they've laid out? Yeah. So again, it, like in the document itself, we have three scenarios um, and, and, and the best case is actually using data from uh, China, from Wuhan, where the uh, COVID-19 pandemic first, uh, first started. And uh, th th they were able to enact measures there that, that basically uh, uh, contained the spread of the infection so that, that each infected person only passed the disease on to about 2.4 others, right? So, so, so that means that as time goes on, it spreads more slowly than if they infect three others or if they infect four others. And uh, when we run that scenario, we get a total number of cases in Saskatchewan of 153,000 cases and um, about 3,075 deaths. Uh, it gets worse from there, right? So if we use the information from Southern Italy, then they saw patients infecting about 2.76 others. So when you start playing that out over, over, over time, it increases exponentially and, and you get a lot more cases. If you apply to Saskatchewan, you get 276,000. 
and 5,260 deaths. The worst case that they have in this document is actually using early Canadian data. Uh, and and there, uh, and, uh, we actually get 408,000 cases because they assume a really, really high rate of spread of, of, of four infections for every person that has the disease. You eventually get up to 408,000 cases and 8,370 deaths. Now, these three scenarios are the best and worst cases that the SHA is planning for. That does not mean they're the best and worst cases that Saskatchewan could theoretically expect. SHA officials said that we're, we, it actually looks, based on current data, that we're doing better right now than even the best case scenario in the document. Uh, and the worst, the real worst case scenario that is mentioned in passing within the document is a case where we do precisely nothing. And then we get as much as 10,000 deaths province-wide over the course of the pandemic. So that is truly a worst case scenario. So I guess it's kind of like that old adage, plan for the worst and hope for the best, eh? Yeah, that's that's what the SHA is doing. And again, they're, they're, they're trying to encourage us to not only hope for the best, but to take action to ensure that, that, that we beat out that best case Wuhan scenario in the document. So if we continue to social distance, if we continue to wash our hands, and if we continue to follow public health orders, they're saying we can do potentially much better than that. And, and, that's, and that looks like how it's going now. I mean, if we look at the numbers that we're currently seeing, keep in mind, we only have about eight hospitalizations and, uh, and, and three deaths so far. That's tragic, but it's considerably lower than even the best case scenario in the document. And uh, um, if we continue to do what we're doing, they expect that we might be able to keep that up. Um, again, though, they're saying that it's too early based on the cases that we're currently seeing to make any sort of prediction about whether we're tracking closer to that Wuhan case, higher than it, or potentially better than it, though they are hoping that we're doing better. And there is some preliminary reason to think so. Uh, can you talk a little bit about it all? Uh, the idea, I think I saw something in your story about the idea of using like, I mean, you know, enter uh, sports like event centers as like field hospitals. Is that something that's only going to be relevant in a worst case scenario or how's that going to work? So keep in mind, the SHA is is trying to plan for something close to the worst case scenario. They're, they're, they're not currently activating plans for, uh, for, for the case f- with 8,370 deaths, uh, but they are activating plans for something between that scenario and the moderate range scenario. That plan includes field hospitals in Regina and Saskatoon. What they're trying to do is add capacity to the system to deal with a potential surge in cases. So in the they're predicting that 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 in those moderate to high scenarios, we could have hundreds of COVID-19 patients in ICUs at a single time, that would outstrip the capacity that we currently have. But with the field hospitals and with other measures that the SHA is taking to reallocate its resources, to add ICU beds, and to, and to acquire more ventilators, they're trying to prepare for a surge somewhere approaching that worst case scenario. Now, they also have contingency plans that, that we got a little bit of an insight to on Wednesday that take us fully up, they say, to the worst case scenario with 408,000 cases and potentially 8,370 deaths. In that situation, you could have as many as 1,280 people in the ICUs province-wide at a single point in time. That would involve opening field hospitals, not only in Saskatchewan's two biggest cities, but potentially 
in other communities throughout the province. So now that we have this, this plan, I guess you could say, uh, what's, what's next in terms of what we're likely to hear from the provincial government? Is it just going to be like, you know, ongoing daily updates of how we're doing, or can we expect kind of an update on whether it looks like what kind of those, which one of those scenarios we're approaching, like how well we're doing, like what, what are, what are people going to be hearing in the weeks going forward? Yeah, uh, so we've been told that they're going to continue to reassess and adjust uh, these models and these scenarios uh, as more data comes in. So uh, we, we, we should eventually be in a better place to track how we're doing and whether the social distancing uh, measures are, 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 are working. Eventually, that might take us to a point the premier suggested on Wednesday, where we can reassess and gradually consider reducing some of the restrictions that we have in place. That's going to take efforts to really crank up the amount of testing that we're doing in the province. And the premier suggested that he wants to take us to a target of about 1,500 tests per day. Once we have a, a better idea of, of how we're really doing in controlling the spread of the disease, then the premier said we can gradually think of reducing some of those restrictions and then using our better testing capacity to assess uh, how it's affecting the uh, trend in cases, or as we've repeatedly heard it referred to, the flattening of the curve. If that curve is remaining relatively flat and manageable for the health system, then we might start seeing a gradual return to normal life in Saskatchewan. Okay, I think uh, I think that's good that we ended it on a hopeful note. <laughs> um, I think that that should be good, Arthur. I think we've got it. Thanks for taking the time to do this. Thanks for having me on, Mark. Okay, so that was Arthur White Crummy, our political reporter with the Regina Leader Post. We're doing these, uh, I guess you could say, audio uh, episodes fairly regularly we're trying to do them once a week uh just to kind of keep you on top of what's going on in the province we're not able to record the videos in our studio like we normally did in the past just because of uh everyone's working from home and out of the office so yeah uh, check back regularly for more of these you can also find our coverage on leaderpost.com uh coverage of uh, what's going on with the pandemic as well as just general news in in the Regina area and Saskatchewan and you can also uh, find us on Twitter and on Facebook and in print as well thanks bye <laughs>